Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. This is Cheyenne from the Free Music Archive. I'm the current director, and I'm joined here by Eric Stewart from Creative Commons, and we're going to tell you about Creative Commons licensing and the Free Music Archive as they pertain to musicians and their needs. So, uh, Eric, thanks for joining us. Would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? I sure would. Uh, my name is uh, Eric Stoyer. I have worked for Creative Commons for a long time. And uh, the way that I worked with Creative Commons most uh, over the years is to work with artists and cultural institutions and media companies and technology companies on understanding what Creative Commons licenses are and how to use them and also how to uh, take advantage of all the awesome content that's out there in the world that's under a Creative Commons license that's been offered to the public by authors and copyright holders under Creative Commons licenses. Uh, I'm a musician myself. I use Creative Commons licenses for my music, and uh, I am uh, a big advocate and fan of of um, openness on the internet. Awesome! Thank you so much, uh, and I apologize for mispronouncing your last name. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna go through a quick rundown of a little bit of the history of the Free, free Music Archive and um, some ways that you can use it. And then I'm going to pass it back over to Eric, who's going to talk about Creative Commons licenses specifically. So here we go. OK, so Songs on the FMA, Remix, Reuse, Recycle. Um, and this is brought to you by the Free Music Archive and Creative Commons. It's also supported in part by a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, so thanks to them as well. Uh, the Free Music Archive was started as a repository for free and Creative Commons licensed music, including live recordings and public domain tracks. And it's affiliated with and founded by WFMU. Um, WFMU is a non-commercial freeform radio station in New Jersey. They have been around for many, many decades, uh, and they are still going strong. Um, currently, WFMU is a big supplier of live tracks. Um, they often have bands come in and they'll record live sessions on WFMU and post them to the Free Music Archive. Um, Creative Commons was established over 10 years ago. They offer custom licenses to add to copyrighted work, uh, but they act as an addendum to copyright, not as an exception to it, and Eric is going to get more into that later. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to start off by talking about how to find tracks on the Free Music Archive. Um, then we're going to understand Creative Commons licenses, talk about how to use songs and projects, and then share work with uh, us at the Free Music Archive and Creative Commons communities. So here we go finding tracks on the FMA. Um, one of the easiest ways to do this is to browse by genre. Um, we have this sort of delightful rainbow-colored spread of genres that you can choose from. You can also use our curator assortment. Uh, if you know that there's a specific curator that you are looking for that has a specific type of music, if they specialize in a genre, or um, perhaps things are licensed a certain way that you prefer. Um, you can also look on the search page. If you click on the, the blank search bar by the Go button at the top right, this will bring up this page, basically. And what you're looking at when you see this page is everything that's been added to the Free Music Archive ever, and it's dated, it's sorted by date added. So the most recent stuff, the things that were just posted, are at the very top, and the things that were posted on the first day of the of the Free Music Archive is at the very bottom of the list. So if you're looking chronologically or you look often at the Free Music Archive and you want to see what's there, Date Added is a great way to filter. There are other ways to filter too in that drop-down menu on the top right. You can also search by BPM. This is kind of good if you're looking for a specific type of thing to use in a project, um, if you want to go for a specific type of feel. Um, we can go from very slow to very fast, zero to infinity, um, mathematically speaking. Also, you can search by license. If you want to filter by a Creative Commons license, you can do so here. Uh, you can look by attribution only, share like, non-commercial, no derivatives, whatever you want. We also have a f uh, filter for public domain stuff, and we have filters that kind of pick and choose these specific licenses to allow for commercial use or allowing for use in a remix or a video. Um, just to, a quick note, on the right side, uh, you can see these little arrows and plus signs. The arrows are a download indicator, so if you want to download a track, just click the arrow, it'll download automatically. If you click on the plus sign, it's not like a upvote thing, it's actually to listen to it in a pop-out player that we have, which is allows you to 
scrub through a track, and adjust volume, things like that. So if you look at an artist page, here's what you'll see. Um, you'll see the name of the artist and a little badge that says artist. It'll also tell you how many albums and how many tracks we have for that artist. Um, down here you'll see the curator if they're affiliated with a curator. Um, most of our artists are affiliated with curators, which is sort of like a label or the the entity through which they came to FMA. If they are not affiliated with a curator, it's probably because they have other tracks on the FMA and they've uploaded these themselves. Um, if we have information about this artist, we have their website, their contact location, or contact information, where they're located, etc. You can see that. Um, if you want to contact an artist, you can do a web search. You can look for a website listed and search for their contact page. These are usually pretty easy to find. You can also look for an email this artist button or a contact link on the artist page. So these are usually on the left side underneath the image of the artist. Um, if you want to find out how a particular album is licensed, you can click on the license and more info button, which is down on the right side. Um, and then it should display the little Creative Commons block of information along with a sort of a little verbal license information in case you are not sure what the little symbols mean. Okay, um, so now I'm going to pass it back to Eric. So we're going to talk about Creative Commons licenses and how to use them. Okay. Creative Commons licenses. Uh, Creative Commons licenses in their most simple description are standardized legal tools that uh, creators of any kind who are making content of any variety from music to text works to photos to illustrations or other kinds of visual art, video, etc. Uh, can use to easily grant copyright permissions to their work. So it's a way of giving to the entire public a set of um, copyright rights to the work that a copyright owner or a creator has created. Um, when you see a creative work online that is marked with a Creative Commons license, and typically it looks like one of the, these icons here attached or associated with the work, it will just be on the web page or you'll see it uh, somehow indicating that it's under a Creative Commons license. Uh, when you see this, you know that the creator has offered it to the world uh, for certain types of free and legal use. And there are six different Creative Commons licenses. There's also a, a separate Creative Commons waiver that waives all copyright rights, which I'll mention and talk about in a minute. But the, 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 the main um, licenses are these six licenses, and each one of them has different conditions. Uh, which license a creator chooses to offer the work under it depends on how they want to share that work. Uh, it's important to understand that there is no registration to use any Creative Commons license. So if you are a musician or any type of creator and want to use a Creative Commons license to license certain copyright rights to the public, you don't need to register to do it. It's, uh, it's as simple as selecting which of the six licenses best meets your goals and then marking that work in some way so that others know that you've chosen to release the work under the terms of that license. So in other words, it's in the same way that people often indicate that a work is under all rights reserved standard copyright by expressing that, by saying that this work is under all rights reserved copyright. You do that with a Creative Commons license by choosing the license that best fits the needs that you're looking to, uh, to meet. Uh, and you express that. You, uh, you say that it's under Creative Commons X license and you link to that license um, online, which I will show you how that looks. These are the different uh, conditions that Creative Commons licenses offer. So if you come to creativecommons.org and you look at our license chooser tool, you'll answer a variety of questions and they're based on these conditions. Um, similarly, you might uh, choose a license right inside Free Music Archive and that licensing tool is uh, a, a built on these, these conditions too. So in these four conditions end up in combination equaling six different licenses. I'll go through the various conditions. So attribution, it's pretty self-explanatory, and all of the Creative Commons licenses require uh, attribution. So even the most liberal license 
requires that the uh, user of a, a work gives credit to the creator of that work. Non-commercial, also pretty self-explanatory. This condition means that um, if it's built into the license that uh, you see a work under, it means that it's okay to use, but only for non-commercial purposes. And it's important to note here that it doesn't mean that there's no possible way to use that work commercially. It just means that you aren't given the rights to do that under this particular Creative Commons license. And uh, what you do in that case is get in touch with the creator and make separate arrangements. So we say that Creative Commons licenses are non-exclusive licenses, meaning that I can put a work out under a Creative Commons license. If I want to make separate arrangements with someone to enable them to use a work under uh, terms that are not permitted or granted by the Creative Commons license, then I am obviously fully within my rights to do that as the creator of that work. No derivative works. Um, this condition means that I uh, have chosen, if I choose a Creative Commons license with this condition built into it, to allow people to distribute and uh, share the work in a verbatim way, but that they are not allowed through the Creative Commons license to make remixes, collages, derivative works, etc., outside of uh, fair use. And the last condition is share alike. And what share alike means is that I, if I uh, choose a share alike license, it means that I'm enabling you and the rest of the world to use my work, but that any derivative work that you make out of it, so any remix, any uh, any, any uh, thing that you that you make that is based on my work, you have to license back to the Commons uh, under the same Creative Commons license that I used to give you that source material. And that is a concept that uh, is drawn from the open source software world, where uh, Typically, open source software is licensed in such a way that anyone who builds upon it or makes new software that's based on it, they have to keep that resulting work in the commons by uh, also licensing it under that same license. Okay, so <clears throat> in combination, those four conditions equal these six licenses, the most permissive and liberal. One is there at the top left, that is just what we call the by license, that is by shorthand for attribution only. The uh, one below that is by NC, which is attribution non-commercial. That means that if you use it, and I've, I've used this license, uh, and, and if you receive work under this license, you can use it as long as you give attribution to the creator and you also do it, also use it non-commercially. One below that, by NCSA, that's shorthand for attribution non-commercial share alike. So those are those three clauses we talked about a minute ago. It requires that you give attribution, that you only use the work non-commercially, and that any resulting work that's made from my work is uh, shared back into the commons under this same license. You take that non-commercial piece of that away, then you have by SA, attribution share alike. Under that is Attribution, no derivatives. That means that you can use it as long as you give credit and you don't make derivative works out of it. And then the most restrictive of the Creative Commons licenses is the one here on the bottom right, which requires attribution, only allows non-commercial use, and does not uh, give you the right to make derivative works. And separately, there's this thing called CC0, which is a copyright waiver and it is a way of releasing all copyright that you might have to a work, all copyright rights you might have to work to the, the public, and that uh, would then not require anyone who used it to even give you attribution. Uh, one of the benefits of using this tool to do this is that it is uh, written to address how the public domain works in as many legal jurisdictions around the world as possible. And so it's uh, a, a very robust and also simple way of putting, effectively putting a work into the public domain and so that it is in the public domain in as many legal jurisdictions around the world as possible. So how are Creative Commons licenses expressed? And expressed is, what I mean by expressed is uh, 
you know, in, in the way that I was describing before, how do you communicate to someone that you have put your work out under a Creative Commons license? That's what I mean by expressed. So it's expressed in three ways. On a Free Music Archive page, which we saw uh, versions of this earlier, you'll see on the right, down by this arrow, that this work is licensed under the attribution share alike license by SA. So it's expressed in its most basic form through this visual representation of the license, a license icon. And under that, it has the name of the work, it has the name of the creator of that work, and it has the license, full license name spelled out, attribution share alike 3.0. Then the second way the license is expressed is through this, uh, this readable, the human readable deed is what we call it, a human readable deed, meaning that if you click through, so on this page where we were, if you click through to that icon or you click through on that uh, name of the license under the icon, you come to a page on our website, creativecoms.org, that looks like this. And it is the uh, very basic summary of what is permitted and uh, restricted by the license. And the third way that the license is expressed is behind that what we call human readable deed. We call this legal deed. And it is uh, obviously literally human readable, but it is much more uh, legalistic. And so most people you know, don't read the full uh, license, but it is there and it has been vetted and uh, it has been updated over the years so that it is a very legally sound and robust document that backs up that human readable summary. So this is, I think if you print it out, it would be something like 14 or 15 pages. So it's more on the scale of a uh, traditional copyright license that you might enter into with a, uh, you know, a, a, a company or a, uh, a, 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 a creator that uh, wasn't using a Creative Commons license necessarily. Looks more like that. It backs up a more uh, aesthetic, visual, and human-readable representation of the license. And lastly, is there's this um, machine-readable metadata. And that is um, essentially when you choose a license, you copy this code, and it, it gets embedded into the, the license so that search engines and other technical tools can uh, look for information about it and identify aspects of the license so that you can do things like on the Free Music Archive and on other sites too, search by license type. And that's the, uh, the basics of, of Creative Commons license. We'll, um, I'm sure at the end of the presentation, return to more specific questions about how licenses, Creative Commons licenses have worked in the real world and, uh, and address some of the common questions that come up around Creative Commons licenses non-commercial use. You may not alter, perform, adapt, or otherwise redistribute the work under any conditions. Again, you may be able to renegotiate this if you contact the artist, but as far as we are concerned, you may not. Okay, so that wraps up using songs and projects. And now we're going to talk about how to share your work with the Free Music Archive. And also, attribution is required for all Creative Commons work, so please note that if you're going to use work from the Free Music Archive, no matter how it's licensed, it's just good practice to attribute the work, which means give the title of the work and the name of the creator, in this case, the musician. Also, you may wanna note that songs on the Free Music Archive may not be radio friendly in terms of language. If you have to observe FCC regulations with regard to obscenity or profanity, you may want to screen the songs first. Not to say that everything on FMA is profanity laden, but some of it is. If you want to remix songs from the Free Music Archive, that also depends on the license, just like everything else. Unless specified, tracks are available as complete pieces, which can be sampled. We do not specifically host packs of individual tracks, stems, and that sort of thing. Also, there are other resources available online. Um, one that comes to mind is CC Mixter, which is a remix-based community. If you want to cover a song from the Free Music Archive, and who knows, maybe you would, um, note that artists retain copyright over their works. So this is just like covering any other artist's work. Creative Commons licenses grant some permissions, but not all. These are not public domain works that you can do whatever you like with, unless they're listed as public domain works that you can do whatever you like with. And again, if in doubt, contact the artist. This is the safest bet.
For FMA specific licenses, which is the FMA download only license, you're only able to stream, download, copy, store, and reproduce the work as reasonably necessary for your personal non-commercial use. You may not alter, perform, adapt, or otherwise redistribute the work under any conditions. Again, you may be able to renegotiate this if you contact the artist, but as far as we are concerned, you may not. Okay, so that wraps up using songs and projects. And now we're gonna talk about how to share your work with the Free Music Archive and other Creative Commons communities. One thing that we get a lot is people asking us how to submit their work to the Free Music Archive. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna walk you through the steps now. Okay, first of all, send us an email, send us a link to the work you'd like to share. We prefer streaming services. If you send us an MP3 attached to an email, we'll delete it. Um, and we also don't do downloads right off the bat. So if you have a SoundCloud or Bandcamp page or it's attached to a YouTube video or there's a way for us to sort of play it without having to download it, that is the best bet. Also, please don't overload us. Um, we are a small staff and we prefer to have an idea of what your best or recommended work would be, stuff that's kind of representational of the body of work that you're trying to get uh, added to the Free Music Archive. So please list three to five of your best or highest recommended tracks um, and we'll go from there. Okay, second of all, choose a license for your work. You can review the licenses at creativecommons.org slash licenses, or you can license them in advance using the creativecommons.org slash choose license picker. Uh, and that basically indicates to anyone who's going to use the work or who's accessing the work how it's licensed. Choose the one that fits your need your needs best. Um, you know, some artists have had great success using CC BY or very open culture, free culture licenses. Others prefer to really keep their work free in the sense that it's free to download, but not free in the sense that it's free to use in a video or in a derivative work. Um, depending on your needs, go with go with what you need to do. Also, please. Um, Include a link to the license or indicate your preference if you have a preference for FMA only, public domain, CC0, Art Libra, or uh, similar license. Also tell us if you're here already. Um, sometimes we get emails from artists that have a track or two on somebody's curator page and they want to just add more tracks. We're happy to talk to you about that, uh, but we need to know if you're here. So give us your FMA username if you've already signed up. Also, we recommend that you read some of our terms and policies for using the site. Um, reviewing our upload policy is a great idea. Um, you also need to have some quality MP3s ready to roll and original work that you can license how you want. So by this I mean the music tracks that you are going to send us have to be your own original work or derived from a public domain work that you can prove is in the public domain then we just need you to sit tight and wait for us. Our curators will review your work and we get a lot of stuff to review every day and we'll be in touch regarding how to move forward. So here we are. Other places to share work include but are not limited to archive.org, Gemendo, CC Mixter, Bandcamp, SoundCloud, and plenty more. These are just a few. If you have questions or comments about how to use music that you find on the Free Music Archive or you want to submit your music to the Free Music Archive, please feel free to get in touch by emailing me at contact at freemusicarchive.org. Thanks. Okay, and that's it. I think we're gonna now go into an FAQ section um, with Eric and we're going to go over case studies and we're gonna talk about some frequently asked questions that Eric gets in his line of work. Okay. So um, we got a question on Twitter, um, and it is asking: Is using a piece of, is using a piece as a soundtrack for a video a derivative work, or does that just apply to audio derivatives? So I I think that uh, I know the answer to this one, but I'll I'll leave it to you, Eric, if you'd like to. Yeah, the short answer is yes. Uh, actually, the the answer is yes uh, for the purposes of uh, the way that we define a derivative work. Uh, is that if a uh, piece of audio is synced with a piece of video, then that is indeed a, a derivative work. So, yeah, if you're specifically looking for music for videos, you'll make sure to want to you'll you'll want to make sure that you look for Creative Commons music that does not have uh, a license attached to it that has the no derivatives clause. 
right? And typically, if something's listed as a non-derivative work, um, that's the license that they want any person from the internet who comes upon their piece to use, but they may be open to renegotiating that with you for a specific use or purpose. So um, I would just recommend asking um, because that's generally the best policy if you're in doubt or you think that um, this piece is really perfect for the use that you have intended and that you'd like to work out some sort of licensing arrangement with the artist. Yeah, and that's one of the great values, actually, of a, a system like the Free Music Archive, not only the, the curated aspect of it, which is hugely valuable, but also the fact that it does provide this sort of more simple way than most, than, than certainly just finding a piece of music somewhere randomly on the Internet. It has this, uh, this kind of more formalized system for getting in touch and having conversations with, with, uh, with artists. So, yeah, definitely the way to go. Yeah, so um, what were some other questions that you get often about this sort of thing? Um, do you get, like, are there, are there, like, questions that are constantly sort of coming through your radar as a Creative Commons yeah. fielder yeah. of questions? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, I'd say that the, 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 the kind, of, kind of questions that come up the most frequently are, you know, is it possible, you know, and people understand the difference between a commercial and a non-commercial license, but they just want to know, you know, do people actually make money who use Creative Commons licenses or does it, although in, in theory it shouldn't prohibit that from happening, you know, does it, does it in some way, like, you know, are there real examples of people who have used Creative Commons licenses and still able to, like, make a lot of money off their music? And the answer is absolutely yes. So there's tons of people who have used Creative Commons licenses, um, whether they're musicians or other types of creators, to increase the visibility of their work and through that they um, whether they're using a non-commercial license to uh, encourage non-commercial uses and then are making these separate deals alongside it that enable commercial use on a one-off basis, or they're even, in some cases, just putting stuff out under commercial Creative Commons licenses, and then uh, people may want to pay for the additional right not to attribute them, or, uh, or you know, you can put out Creative Commons license music under a commercial license and then use that almost as a loss leader, for lack of a better uh, way to put it, because you get this music out there that lots and lots of people hear, and then maybe someone will want to commission you to do a separate work because they heard the work that you put out under that commercial license. And while it itself was available to the world to use commercially without cost, uh, it increased your reputation. So, you know, I'd, I'd actually be interested to hear from you about some of the uh, musicians who have uh, done interesting things on the Free Music Archive, especially with Creative Commons licenses, so you'll have a good sense of some of the, the stars on the FMA, um, but I can also talk more broadly about some of the kinds of musicians that we've worked with over the years who most definitely are selling their music and also using Creative Commons licenses. Yeah, I think that um in the experience that I've had so far, I've been here since October and I've been interviewing um, net labels and artists from FMA for that since then, basically for the podcast Radio Free Culture, which we do every week. Um, I've noticed that a lot of artists who use CC BY um, end up getting a lot of attention because they are allowing people to use their work in videos and in remixes and all sorts of purposes, but they end up getting approached to be commissioned. Um, you know, I spoke to Kevin McLeod and Chris Zabriskie, and they both um, do CC BY work, and a lot of it's sort of orchestral or instrumental, and so they're used quite widely for soundtrack purposes, and they've also been commissioned by a variety of you know, filmmakers and commercial uh, entities to try to soundtrack various works. Um, I know also that Kelly Mays recently was approached by, I think, a car company and did some music for them, and she's been using CC BY for a long time. So depending on, like, what your goals are as an artist and if you are looking to get licensed, uh, get approached for licensing rights, sometimes doing a more open license can be a good strategy because you're going to end up getting your work out there more. More people are going to be listening to it and using it for their work. Um, I think that the more closed licenses are a great way to share stuff for free and to give people an indication of what you'd really like for them to do with it. Um, but I think that the, the more permissive licenses end up actually netting more like eyes and ears for your work. 
Yeah, I think that's true because they then get incorporated in these videos. They can be more easily used in podcasts, but also there's the idea of you know, remix, which happens very. Uh, you know, e there's sort of a, it's a very frictionless way to offer music to explicitly for the the idea of remix, and and, uh, and not even remix so much as as source material for completely new tracks. So I, I, it's there's there's sometimes I think this characterization of uh, some artists that use these sorts of licenses as a little being a little bit cynical if they already have a fan base because what they're doing is actually like um, sort of putting it out there and it's actually a PR campaign like remix my track and I'm allowing you to do it people do that stuff anyway so really the value of that um, giving up the, the the rights to the public to make derivative works is that you actually can provide them a source material that enables them to make totally new tracks like basing you know their work on your stuff instead of just taking your thing and making a remix of it but of course you have the are really interesting remixers out there too, and they're always looking for tracks that they can do that kind of stuff with. So yes, I would most certainly agree that you get the most value out of using a more open license, and um, you know the the closed licenses have uh, some interesting applications. Certainly, especially when they are used as ways to encourage. Um, people just to sort of hear the track and then approach you maybe about making a one-on-one -on -one arrangement that sits alongside that more restrictive Creative Commons license. But I think the most fun you know, versions of what I've seen have to do with people who have just opened things up and let people run with it. Absolutely. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say is just the other question that uh, you know that that we we get a lot, and it's not a it's not a dumb question at all. It's 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 um it, it's it's sort of obvious once you really think about how Creative Commons licensing or copyright licensing is, and, and especially um, not exclusive licensing works. But it's just a question that I think that comes up because people assume that if you're using a Creative Commons license, you can't do things like also distribute your album through Spotify or iTunes and that kind of stuff. And those really have nothing to do with each other. You don't lose any rights to do anything with your work that you've created. If you put it under a Creative Commons license, all you're doing is giving rights, particular you know, certain rights that you've chosen to give to the public, but you don't lose anything yourself. So um, there's lots of music out there that is available for streaming or for purchase through these you know, traditional uh, retailers that use music distributors that you, know, you get everything else that you listen to uh, through these systems through, and they have Creative Commons licenses. They may not show up through those systems because they're not using the music under a Creative Commons license. They're using it under that sort of separate arrangement that we talked about before. Uh, but it doesn't mean at all that if you create something and put it out there into the world under a Creative Commons license that you've lost the ability to do things, you know, that commercializing it or doing whatever you want with it. It's still your work. Yeah, I think that's that kind of sums up like the some rights reserved bit of Creative Commons. Like that aspect is a little confusing for people. I think that they may assume that when they assign a Creative Commons license to a version that they're sharing with the public, that that nullifies part of their copyright claim onto the work, which isn't the case. Right. Um, yeah. So, did you want to talk about any? Um, particular concerns that come up often with like the commercial non-commercial bit or do you think do you feel like you covered that well um, I don't know that I covered it well I tried <laughs> to address it but no that is you know that is probably the other question is it, it ends up being, being some somewhat more of a theoretical concern than one that in the real world has much merit, but it is something that comes up all the time, so it is certainly worth talking about here. You know, people want to know well, what constitutes a commercial use. You know, if I have a, you know, a, I'm trying to give a, an example that's more current than this, but the the example that came up all the time five or six years ago is what you know, if I have a piece of content that I found and it's under a Creative Commons license and it's a non-commercial license, and then I put it on my blog and my blog is running Google Ads that I'm making seven dollars a month on. Is that a commercial use? And there's you know some documentation that we put together based on a lot of surveys that we've done with our community, and also you know, look at the way that other copyright licenses define and think about uh, commercial use. But the bottom line is, you know, if it's a commercial use, and that's 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 um, nothing that we are going to make determinations about. It's really like, is the primary use of the work a commercial use? Uh, and in that case, you, know, you should not be using work that is only available to you non-commercially. Uh, and 
But like I say, it's so much more of a hypothetical concern than a real one because we really don't see arguments around that. And one of the really interesting things, I don't mean to go too deep into the woods here, but this was, this was the most interesting thing about this. It is a question that comes up all the time and it's come up since the inception of Creative Commons. But when we did this survey with our community, we surveyed people that were users of Creative Commons licensed works, and then we surveyed people that used Creative Commons licenses to publish and distribute their works. And the people who were more typically defined themselves as users of Creative Commons licensed works had a much more strict definition of what commercial use was than the people that were using the licenses to distribute their works. Meaning that if I use a Creative Commons license work, or if I, if I use a Creative Commons license to publish a work and I put a non-commercial license on it, my expectation is actually much more liberal around the definition of commercial and non-commercial than users. So users of those works typically don't, um, they're not out of sync. They don't, they don't, they don't have expectations for what non-commercial and non-commercial means that is out of sync with the, uh, the, the creator and the publisher of that work. Uh, which was a good thing because it meant that in the real world there was, wasn't going to be much friction and it's turned out that there really hasn't been much. Yeah, that's a really interesting uh, case study. Um, I think you detailed it in your wiki if people want to do further reading on that. Um, and one other question that I end up getting quite often is um, I am a nonprofit entity or I, you know, I'm I work for a nonprofit, but we're making this commercial, or we're making, we're trying to like, um, you know, use this song in this venture that's hoping to raise us money. Um, and from my understanding, it doesn't depend. It's it's not dependent on your status as a nonprofit as to whether or not the commercial or non, whether or not the use is commercial or non-commercial. Yeah. It's actually the nature of what you're doing. So just because yeah. you have five hundred one c three doesn't exempt you from using things listed as non-commercial for commercial purposes. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's exactly right. The it's 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 um, dependent on whether the use is commercial or non-commercial. There's certainly uh, commercial entities that do many things that are non-commercial uses of things, or they just have non-commercial aspects to the. The, 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 their endeavor, and then there are many commercial uses that a non-commercial entity might engage in uh, broadly, and, and that applies also to things like the use of music. So a non-commercial, um, just to use one of the examples that you laid out there, a, a, a non-profit that does an advertisement for itself, even though another word for advertisement is commercial, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a commercial use, that is an advertisement for uh, a nonprofit, but let's say a nonprofit is uh, putting on a benefit event, and um, the whole point of that event is to pull in money for this nonprofit, and they use content or music that is licensed under a non-commercial license. That to me would be a lot more iffy because that is a the use there is commercial. Mm -hmm. I have I've had emails from people that are saying like, what how do I license things? Like, what's a way to do that? And like, how do people do that? Like, and Kevin McLeod has just sort of a standard form that he uses with everyone who wants to license work, and he has a set price. Um, and I think that other artists kind of determine based on the client and what they can afford and what they are willing to spend or what they have budgeted for that purpose. Um, but do you have any insight onto that, like about licensing your own work and and maybe? Are there templates out there? Are there resources that you recommend for musicians to access? Um, you know, honestly, there's not an ideal platform for that. I wish that there would be sort of a broker that came through and created a business around doing this. There, there just really isn't that. Um, I think that the, in some ways, the Free Music Archive and like the relationship I was describing before with uh, FMA and Vimeo, it, it helps facilitate that a little bit because it increases the exposure of the tracks. And through the Free Music Archive, you can easily get in touch with an artist and strike up a, a conversation and hopefully a deal. But no, there's not like a system that I'm aware of where there's just like sort of a pricing wizard that's associated with you know a track and you can go in there and, uh, and, and, and do it that way. That would be a really good idea for someone to create. Yeah, so anybody out there who needs a million dollar idea, we just <laughs> gave it to you. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that um, 
you know, there are other art artists out there who have probably written about this on their website or blogged about it or, or would be open to answering your questions your queries about it um, and you know I also get as the FMA director a lot of emails um, just sort of directed towards the Free Music Archive asking for us to license music and since we don't write any of the music and we don't post any of the music except for these like silly um, first tracks that we put on our on our challenges like in contests um, which are all those are all um, CC by or they're Creative Commons Zero, so you can literally do whatever you want with them, uh, you know, and, and we want you to do that. Um, we cannot and do not license the music because we didn't write it. Um, and so I think that that's kind of uh, a misunderstanding, too, is that if something's on the FMA um, that we somehow um, attach the license to the piece or that we can change the terms of the license, um, and that's just not the case. So if there are any people out there who are listening or watching, uh, just note that if there are issues with a license on the page um, and you're not the creator and you don't need us to actually like change the license for you, um, we can't issue a license for your commercial or or your film. Uh, you have to do that with the artist. So, yeah, um, I don't think we have any more questions on Twitter or YouTube. So, uh, unless you have anything else to add, Eric, I think we can wrap up. No, I, I, uh, I would only add, again, that you should feel free to contact me if you're a musician and have any questions about Creative Commons licenses specifically or want to hear uh, more about how other artists have used them. I can also point you to uh, some of the case studies that we've documented online. You can find some of those just by going to our wiki, like Shine said. Um, but yeah, you know, I, uh, the only, only thing I'll say is that I've always appreciated the Free Music Archive for the reasons that I mentioned before. One is that it's this great source of not only, you know, Creative Commons music, but also other kinds of music that are licensed in other ways. But also that it's, you know, the, the fact that it's curated Creative Commons music, so the extent that it's a, you know, a platform for Creative Commons music, that's really valuable because, uh, you know, there's, there's certainly still a perception that there are people who are just kind of toiling away making you know, credit music that they throw out there for free on the internet and that it's not worth anything, and that's just not true. And FMA is a great example of that because it has so much, it's put so much work into surfacing this really great stuff, and, uh, and that's valuable for, for everyone in the Commons community who wants to uh, you know, make it clear that there's, there's uh, a lot of really interesting stuff that's in the Commons. Yeah, and I think the best way to utilize the FMA as a musician is either to, uh, you know, send us your tracks and, uh, you know, tell us about what you want to do or um, get in touch with a curator. If you think that there's a curator that your work would be a good fit with, you're welcome to contact them as well and try to get in their family. Uh, some of them are net labels too, so you may be able to make connections there. Um, or just like get in and dive in and like see what we've got. We have more than 80,000 tracks right now um, and growing constantly. We're always posting new stuff. So um, there, there's a lot of wild and wonderful stuff in there that um, we're doing our best to make easily searchable and at least marginally genreified when we can. Some of it is pretty uh, unexplainably uh, <laughs> unclassifiable, but that's part of the beauty of it. And uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and being patient with us. Um, and thanks again, Eric, for taking the time today. This has been super awesome, and I think that our viewers are going to get a lot of value out of it. So thanks very much. Thank you very much. All right. Well, see ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye.